Hey, what's up? You know, I'm taking another very important topic from carboxylic acid, and uh, this is about you know the relationship between pKa and uh, acidic strength of carboxylic acid, right? So uh, let's start that and see how this is going to be useful to you. So the one thing that you do know that carboxylic acids are you know acid because they are good proton donor, right? And in case you haven't you know checked it well. Just go back to the very previous uh, you know lecture where I have described why carboxylic acid is a stronger acid than alcohol and phenol. That is also very important. So right now I am concerned about the relationship between acidic strength with the pKa. Okay. So uh, where I have to start is you know like a carboxylic acid. You know when a carboxylic acid you know react with is mixed with water. So what happened actually? Carboxylic acid you know. Converts into ions. So, what the two ions it produces? The first one it produces a carboxylate ion. This produces a carboxylate ion. Along with that, it produces hydronium ion. Right? Now, you know one thing I made you very clear in the previous one that you know this carboxylate is highly stable. That's why carboxylic acids are a stronger acid. Now, coming back to the you know pK. So before that, you know we have to find out you know. You know the value of equilibrium constant. So what K is? K is calculated as R C O O negative, right? And then you have to multiply it from you know hydronium ion concentration, right? Probably you do know how this is. And then what you have? You have your carboxylic acid R C O O H in the reactant side, and along with that you have water as well, right? Okay, so. This is what the expression of K comes out to be. Now, the uh, one thing that you do know that the concentration of water here is extremely large amount, right? So you are talking about a highly dilute solution of carboxylic acid. So what that means? The concentration of water is too much as compared to the carboxylic acid. So what will happen? This will take in as a constant. This will take in as a constant, and there is no change in the concentration of water. So how this will change? This will be, you know, K, you know, H two O. Just pay attention. This is going to be really very important. K H two O is equal to is going to be R C O O negative, and then you have your hydronium ion already. So H three O positive, and then you have to divide it by the concentration of the carboxylate carboxylate anion. So this is how you come across the you know equation. Now, what this is actually this is also called you know. Dissociation constant of acid. So what K is? K is called dissociation constant. Let me write this. This is called dissociation constant. Dissociation constant. Constant. In case you are not, you know, much aware about this, you have to check out some of the topic from equilibrium which you did last year in eleventh class, right? Where D K is calculated by K A is equal to, you know, C alpha square. Upon one minus alpha, but right now I cannot take you through this topic, so I'm just you know letting you a you know uh, a help here to know that what K is called. So K is called dissociation constant, and K is equal to here you know this one. So K A is equal to K H two O, which is equal to this particular expression, right? So this is how. Now you have to consider here very important thing is that you know uh, that K A that K A is directly proportional to the Concentration of hydronium ion. K A is directly proportional to the concentration of hydronium ion. What does it mean? That K A will increase. K will increase if you increase the concentration of hydronium ion in a solution, right? So this is what the relation. What does it mean? Stronger will be the acid. Stronger will be acid. Stronger will be. Stronger will be an acid. Right. Let me repeat here. You know, K A is directly proportional to the concentration of hydronium ion. So, what that means? If you increase the concentration of acid in a solution, the K will increase, and increasing the K will increase the hydronium ion, and therefore the acid will become further more stronger. So, we have a new relation here that K is directly proportional to hydronium ion. Now, let's go through the you know next part right here. Talk about you know this P K A. What this P K A? You know, this is what you have to understand. That pK is nothing but log, you know, negative log, negative log base ten. I don't know what this base ten means here, but you know, you can check out from your mathematical, you know, ability. So then, you know, this pK is equal to log k a. So let's concentrate here. Now, what will happen uh, if you mathematically, you know, try to dig this out? You will be able to find out this pK a 
that this PKA is inversely proportional to KA is inversely proportional to KA. So did I write this or you are able to understand inversely proportional inversely you know proportional proportional right. So what that means you know if you try to increase the KA PKA will decrease. This also means that PKA PKA is inversely proportional to you know KA inversely proportional to KA and so now the question is ki what is the relation coming out to be with the acidic strength. So I am taking this one one more level ahead. So PKA is inversely proportional to the you know uh, acidic strength also. So in short I am writing acidic strength here. So higher the PKA tell me higher the PKA for us you know acidic solution you know uh, smaller will be the acidic strength and why it's because the K will also decrease. So these are you know the, these are the relations coming out to be between PKA, KA and the acidic strength. Now there are actually two types of group you know which uh, decides whether the acidic strength of the carboxylic acid will increase or decrease and these two, these two groups are called electron withdrawing group and they are called you know electron donating group right. So let me you know uh, write this here and help you out what this is. So I am talking about you know EWG right. So uh, let us take an example here. Suppose you are taking an example where carbon you know is attached to 3 fluorine atom, 3 fluorine atom here. So this is an electron withdrawing group. You probably know that the fluorine is one of the most electro most electronegative atoms. So what that means, you know, it will pull all the electron, you know, all the electrons from the carboxylic carbon towards itself. So the, all the electrons are moving towards the fluorine here. So this, you know, what is the benefit of this? And an EWG stabilizes, stabilizes, stabilizes the carboxylate carboxylate anion carboxylate anion anion and hence EWG EWG is directly proportional to the acidic strength directly proportional to the acidic strength. One thing you can also add that these two are directly proportional to Ka right but Ka is directly proportional to the you know K is directly proportional to the hydrogen ion or hydronium ion you can say but these are inversely proportional to the these are inversely proportional to PKA right. So this is what the relation is coming out to be. Let us talk about the you know EDG here. Suppose I am talking about EDG. So what this EDG let us take an example. Suppose you have an alkyl group here attached to the carboxylic carbon right. So you do know that this is an electron donating group. So this is your electron donating group. Now this electron donating group you know uh, destabilize, destabilize, destabilize the carboxylate carbon, the carboxylate, carboxylate carbon, carbon and uh, therefore, therefore an EDG, EDG is inversely proportional to you know acidic strength acidic strength and now the question is you know what is the uh, you know uh, what is the order of order of you know do, uh, you know uh, what is the order of groups groups that decide acidic strength decide acidic strength strength of acid. So let me tell you, you know uh, CF3, CF3 has the highest you know uh, electron withdrawing group and then you have this NO2 and then you have you know that cyanide and cyanide is followed by fluorine, fluorine is followed by bromine, bromine is followed by iodine and finally iodine is followed by the phenyl group. So what this pH is? pH refers to the phenyl group. So this is the order of you know a group that will help you decide the pKa or K of the acid right. So thanks for watching. Take care.